before you watch the rest of this video I would just like to say that I this is the second time that I have recorded this video since the first time I managed to record all 23 segments with my mic turned off. Let's hope that the second time through is slightly better than the first video. Okay then, so in this video I am the Gibbering GM and I'm going to talk about why you do not need loads of races and classes in order to create a character that is complex. My name is Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. So as I continue to progress through life, I'm starting to try out a new approach to things. And rather than making everything really complicated, I'm trying to go for the more simple, straightforward approach. Now, I have to say at this point that I normally make things so complicated that I actually have to make notes in Evernote to remind myself how to do things. So, you know, that is quite complicated. But it was while I was making things a little bit more simpler that I suddenly realised that I need to encourage players and myself to adopt a similar approach when we're creating characters or NPCs. And that in order to make them unique, you don't need to make them complex. So when I used to play or DM um, Dungeons and Dragons or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition. One thing that I remember really enjoying engaging with was the race class combinations. And this choice was initially influenced by my the choice of films or fictions that I was reading or watching at that time. So for example, if I wanted to create an archer character, then they would be an elf. If I wanted to create a warrior, they would be a dwarf. And if I wanted to create my favorite class in those days, a magic user, then they would be human, old with a long beard. Yes, you can probably guess which trilogy was influencing my character choices at the start of my RPG experience. As my fiction and film tastes expanded, as well as when new magazines came into the store, and um, for example, I started to read the fancy role-playing game magazine called Imagine and even White Dwarf and Dragon were, well, White Dwarf was a lot different in those days. But as the, as I sort of like started to engage with these magazines, there was new classes that actually came into existence. And when the Unearth Arcana um, rule book for first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons came into the shops and we bought it then all of a sudden I started to be able to create cavaliers and acrobats and the playable races changed and rather than just being fixed to you know like humans, elves, dwarves, half elves we started to be able to play drows, the dark elf and I do remember taking a huge amount of time sat down creating a whole stable of drowic characters you know one for every single class come to think of it I never ever played them just on a little side note um, by the time I'd got this far with the previous recording, I had about eight bloopers for the um, blooper reel that only my the supporters get to see, my Patreons and supporters of on my coffee account, KO-FI. Um, but so far I've got one. So obviously second time through is a lot better. Now, while I was looking at these race and class combinations, I never would play what I call the rules game. Now, you might have different words for this, but what I mean is that certain race and class combinations would be put together to make um, perfect 
rule matches. They, they really sort of like allowed the character to be um, very proficient. Now, when I say that, um, it was a bit like you would have characters that would, due to their race and class combination, you would roll a five on a d20 and then the player would say um, plus, 50, plus 12, that's 17. You know, and you'll be thinking, what? You know, or, you know, the human magic user who originally in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons um, would have 1D for hit points and only be wear, able to wear cloth armour. But suddenly they were able to have 1D for plus 15 hit points at first level and were able to cast spells while wearing plate mail and wielding like a two-handed halberd. And the character or the race and class combination just got more and more complex and players started to find new races and to make matches with new character classes in order to almost like make their characters unique and be more complex. So instead of a human fighter, they were playing a budgie warrior. I forget what the budgies were called. I used to just call them, but was it a Kenku? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Anyway, what I'm suggesting is that you don't actually have to think about the class and race combinations in order to make your characters unique or to be more complex. And you don't need to sort of like say, I will be playing a flying tortoise with an alligator mouth who is a cavalier warlock assassin monk. There are other ways to actually make your characters more unique and have greater depth. And just like I was saying before, there's a much easier, simple route. Now, if you've ever seen one of my own or our own Mithras campaign, you will be aware that I run an all human party. Now, this is mainly because I like to avoid the range of possible classes in order to channel the player's creativity into their characters rather than them just looking for race and class combinations that might provide somewhat of an advantage in the session. So, for example, when the torch goes out, then none of the characters can see. There's no, um, there's no ca player that has ca player's character that has ultra vision or infra vision or dark vision or any other type of see through wall vision. You know, they all cannot see when that torch goes out. But that doesn't mean that these characters don't have depths. What it means is that the player has to focus on their characteristics or the character's characteristic or their attributes or their skills in order to start building the character up. And it, it's almost as if they're coming to their character creation as a blank slate. There's no race bonuses or special beliefs or understandings or characteristics of that race that the player actually has to take account of. The, the other thing that I would say is that it also removes stereotyping and you know we all we've seen it if i see an or hear another scottish dwarf in a fancy role-playing game again i will scream and by the way i have nothing against scottish people or dwarfs in any sense of the word but if the race and all its characteristics and restrictions have been removed then how can a character or a player gain that depth and complexity in their character. Well, I'm not just going to leave it here. I'm going to give you some ideas straight after a word from our sponsors. And yes, the sponsor is me. So please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras, whether or not that be the rules or some actual play sessions. And I also produce these Gibbering GM videos, which are related to role-playing games. I also produce and edit and provide for you some personal blogs as well. And if you would like to provide some additional support, then the link to both my Patreon and my Coffee account are down in the descriptions. 
And please, please, please remember that as well as the usual tiers on Patreon, there are some special RPG tiers, which allows you to gain access to the World Anvil site. And there you can have a look at the information I provide about the campaign and also my adventure notes, all free of charge. Well, not actually free of charge because you paid for the Patreon. Anyway, support me any way you are able to. And please remember that I really do appreciate it. And all your support brings me one step closer to my dream of being a full-time content creator. So if you want to ditch your extensive race list and feel that you just want to play a human, then here are some ideas for you to use in order to develop the depth of their character, of your character or their complexities. Okay then, so some questions for you. First up, what's their philosophy about life? And when you're thinking about this, rather than thinking that, you know, oh, it's this, this and this, try to think how would this actually be seen in the game? How are viewers or other people going to actually recognize your philosophy by your actions? So if they have a laissez-faire approach, do they take unnecessarily unnecessary risks? Are they overly cautious? Do they believe that they'll have a second life, but they have to make this life really important and really be good in this life? Do they believe that if they do anything bad, then karma will get its revenge? Or do they not believe in any such things at all? Secondly, what about their beliefs? And this is not just something that players who are playing theists or clerics need to engage with. Everybody can do it. You know, what do they think or who do they think controls their destiny? Is the whole world revolving and evolving all by, them, by itself or by pure luck? Or is there some kind of divine being or purpose actually causing the world to progress how it is? Is there something at work, some invisible force, you know, and again, think how would this manifest itself in the actions that the character does? And finally, what what does the character like or dislike? Um, is it people? Is it events? Do they have phobias? Do they have passions? Are they suspicious? of various races or types of people. And if, there is, if they are, then why? What's caused this? Could it be remediated? Could it be reduced? What are they trying to achieve in life? What are their goals in life? What do they believe their destiny in life is? And remember, think of those things, but then think about that next step in the sense that how will you communicate that? How will your player communicate it, uh, your character communicate it to its colleagues? And remember, it's really important that your characters develop as well. So although you might, these are just starting questions, they might actually develop and change as the campaign progresses. And this is one of the reasons I much prefer campaigns rather than one-offs because I, I feel that in a campaign the character skills develop and their what their abilities develop but also their personalities develop and you know there's something quite special about a character that starts off disliking say rogues but then after the party's rogue has saved them several times that starts to influence them and also sets up a really good narrative that those two characters can actually have. As more and more races come into the rule set and get embedded into the rules, players are going to have an ever increasing diversity of race and class combinations in order to invest time in. But if you would like a challenge, then why not play a human fighter and see how much depth you can actually bring to that character. Once you get going, 
you will be surprised about how much fun they are actually to play. And rather than a very complex approach to your character generation, the characters will still have those that depth, but you will be taking a much simpler and straightforward approach. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to stay safe and stay positive. I'll catch you all next time. See ya. Bye.